guys. Thank you for the so so fun to be with in in a in a room with like totally big time rock stars. I appreciate y'all. Thank you so much for having me. Here's here's what's gonna be fun. Um, I'm assuming Ethan that I can I can jam and go. So yes, you can. Uh, what I'm gonna do, what I'm gonna do is I want to make sure that this works. So I'm going to try to get a big fat face on my screen. Can you see a big fat my big fat face and screen and all of this? Show uh, up? Your your slide is embedded in your little video box. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. That's fine. So it'll either be that, my fat face. Can you see me now? Okay, cool. Yeah, but we'll just need to take a... over the whole screen. Yeah, so um, can, can you give me someone, give me like spotlight permission? That would be awesome. Or or just spotlight me. That would be cool too, if that that works. Um, otherwise, if, for those that are actually watching, all you need to do is to click on the top right menu and click speaker mode, and you'll see my full screen. Click yep. on the top right menu, click speaker, and you should see me on full screen. Really good. And this will be my my big fat face. All right, good. Um, I yes. have a super tactical way of uh, sharing a bunch of things with you. By the way, my good man, Tristan Amada. Tristan and I have been friends for 10 plus years. Uh, he is a super cool dude. We've shared so many stories, ideas, tactics together, and I've seen him just build and grow some amazing things. And Tristan has actually seen several parts of my listing presentation stuff. And I, I love this so much that um, I have made it my mission to share this with the world because I was just on a $17 million listing appointment this past weekend. And I realized that the only way that we can continue to build and grow our skills is to be in these appointments, not just say, oh my gosh, let me give you some idea about listings. And you've never actually talked to a client in your life. I The thing that bothers me the most, and this is the last time I'll talk about you know, me being on the soapbox. The thing that bothers me the most is when someone that has never done something that is skill oriented, try to teach you to do that thing. Now, I don't mind it when coaches and consultants teach you the mindset stuff. That's totally cool. I respect that. But if someone's teaching you how to shoot a basketball and they never shot a basketball in their life, it is a little hard for me to take their feeling around it because when you're in the living room and the client says, oh, Jimmy said he'd do it for 2%, you have never felt that pain in the pit of your stomach and unless you have felt that you will never be able to do that. So I want to show you something, what I call the 100% closing method. Uh, super cool, very, very tactical. So kind of hold on to, to yourself. I'll give you all the slides and all of that in just a second. But here's the key part around what I want to share. And it's going to start with a little bit of a story. So um, if you are in the chat and you have seen this, can you tell me where this is? Where is this thing, this picture I'm putting up in the chat? Where do you think this is? If you, I'd love the, the first person that actually gets it. Dubai, you're absolutely right, Dubai. Now, the crazy part about this thing in Dubai is that I want to show you something even more fun. This, if you look closely, there is a there is a little uh, helipad right there. And when I saw that helipad, I actually worked in Dubai. When I saw that helipad, I saw Tiger Woods hit a hit 18 golf balls off that, that helipad. He hit one golf ball for a million dollars a ball. And I was like, wait a minute. If Tiger can hit 18 golf balls for a million dollars a ball, and they put felt on the helipad just for him, I think we could do something special. So I'm a tennis player, so I built that tennis court. I built that tennis court, right? With And so so I wanted to, I wanted to build the highest uh, tennis court in the world. And then I was like, well, when you build the highest tennis court in the world, well, it doesn't mean anything unless you get cool people to play on this highest tennis court. So I got Roger Federer and Andre Agassi to play on this tennis court. By the way, I will tell you right now, it's... It was so windy, they could barely keep anything going. They could barely keep a rally going. It was so windy. And you may say, Sharon, what does Andre Agassi and Roger Federer have to do with listing appointments? And I'll tell you this. Um, the way Tristan does it is different from the way I do it. The way Ethan does it is different from the way I do it. So all I'm going to share with you today is I'm just going to pick one. So let's say I'm Federer today. I'm going to give you the Federer way of how we do it. Agassi is pretty good. He may do it well too, but I'm going to give you my way. And your job is to figure out whether you like a couple of ideas in my way so you can actually utilize it at some point. So uh, I'm going to give you seven free tactics, meaning you don't have to spend any money of doing this to win 100% of your listing appointments. And you may say, well, Sharon, that's really interesting. How, like, how have you learned any of this? So I want to give you some track record. It may be a little fuzzy, but I'll make it blur, uh, br brighter in a second. So I went on... Um, in the first 18 months, I went on 161 listing appointments. Out of the 161 listing appointments, you won 152 out of 161. That is a 94.5% success rate, uh, over $457 million in listings taken. 
But then I realized, I was like, man, why did I, why did I have this delta? And so I was like, there's got to be a way for me to do better. So in the next 15 months, I went on 87 listing appointments and we won all 87 for a hundred percent success rate over $500 million in listings taken. So net net in a 23 month period, we went on 248 listing appointments, won 239 of them for over a billion dollars in listings taken. Now here's the interesting part. These were in 22 different markets, 100% cold. I had zero relationship with every single person I went on this listing appointments with. So it's not like, oh, it was, you know, Sharon went to list Tristan and Janice's house. No, it was not. I had no relationship. And when you can do something cold and still win, then you know this process actually works. And that's the stuff that I want to actually teach you. I want to show you like the exact process that we utilize to win. And the best part about this, it all was inspired by date night. All was inspired by date night. And I'll tell you about date night in one second. So um, my wife and I are really boring. Every Thursday night, we go on date night to Whole Foods so we can stay in our jammies. Tristan, it's super easy. We what whole food, by wait, ourselves. What Whole Foods do you go to, bro? Hey, man, I can't tell I'm you. I'm just going to go visit. Like, you know? That's why I'll be like, hey, that's a, <laughs> I got my PJ, it's like, Sharon. It's like, it's like the most private setting for us where I put my hoodie on. We walk through Whole Foods. We grab our stuff. We get to the hot bar. We get the soup and all of that. And I'll tell you what happened. What happened was suddenly while I was pushing our cart down the aisle, my wife said, don't look. What do you do when someone says, don't look? You look. And I'm looking. I'm like, don't look at what? I'm looking. And then my wife says, hey, we went to dinner with those two people. And I'm like, you need to stop pointing. And I actually have a decent memory. And I said, I have no memory of going to dinner with these two people. And she's like, what do you mean? Like, we sat through it for three hours. You paid for dinner. You were wearing this shirt. And I'm like, I do not remember them. It was like six months ago. And I have a decent memory. And so we did a quick hard about turn. We didn't want that uh, awkward kind of meeting of the shopping carts. And we took off and I was driving home. And this is where this epiphany hit me I was driving home. And I thought, wow, I scheduled this dinner with my wife and my, uh, and this other couple, we went to dinner, probably at a nice place. We probably sat for three hours. We talked about so many things. I probably paid for it. And in, in a few months, I don't even know their name. And here's what Agents believe in the listing appointment. They believe that they can show up in the listing appointment and they believe they can crush it. They believe that the client is going to remember their 22 point marketing plan. They believe that the client's going to know their value prop. The client's not going to remember anything. I don't even remember their names. And then I thought, oh my gosh, this helped me understand this one thing, which is I have to do, uh, I have to win before I arrive. What I want to show you today is not what you do in the appointment. What I want to show you today is so easy. I want to show you how to win before you arrive. Uh, maybe if, if the follow-up boss team has me back the next time, I'll do the what you do in the first seven minutes. But I want to show you seven tactics on how you win before you arrive. It is really mechanical, but how you do it in, in a granular way is really important. So let's actually kind of talk about winning before you arrive. And these are my seven tactics for you. Uh, kind of go into the tactical part of it now. So the entire part of winning before you arrive is to prove that you're the number one choice even before the meeting. If you can prove that, if I can prove to Tristan and Janice that I'm the number one choice even before the meeting, there I come predisposed to wanting to do business. And that's really powerful. But the way you do that is you have to layer in the things that are important. So what I'm going to show you today is from the time you book an appointment Till the time you go to the appointment, there are a few things that we need to do. And I'm going to show you these seven tactics on what you need to do between the time you book an appointment and between the time you get a listing. So let me actually take you through all those seven things. Uh, by the way, I'm going to give you my slides right now, but you have to promise me, you have to promise me that you're not going to look at it. So here are the slides. You can have all of it. Uh, there's no, there's, by the way, there's no, there's no opt-in link. There's no many chat squeeze, just click the link and get the slides. Cause I just, that's what you want. Right. So, um, so here, 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 let me take you through the seven tactics before to win before you arrive. Here's the first one. I want to talk to you very simple about manufacturing safety into this process. And, uh, I want to take you through a script where I realized that the number one thing that broke was how we actually, what we did after we scheduled the appointment. So I'm going to give you when you're book the entire process of winning before you arrive starts when you book the appointment. So here's what I want to talk talk to you about. 
I want you in this to booking the appointment. I want you to take responsibility, take all the responsibility off their shoulders. I want you to control the entire experience. I want you to introduce them to automation and reminders because we think that we have to do all the work around this. And there's one person who's a master at automation, which is Mr. Tristan Almada. And I want you to make it easy on yourself. So I'll give you a sample script. So let's say Tristan and I are talking, let's say I'm talking to Janice because Tristan has no say in that, right? So let's say I'm talking to Janice. Yeah, and uh, and so Janice says she's confirmed. She, she's like, Sharon, that sounds good. We're confirmed for 3.30 tomorrow. So my my script goes something like this. And by the way, I'm not a break, like memorize my script kind of guy. I You should at least know kind of where we're going in this process. So I say, hey, Janice, that's perfect. We're confirmed for 3.30 p.m. on Thursday and I will meet you at the home. Let's give ourselves about 60 minutes so we're not rushed in building a game plan. Most important, building a game plan. What am I saying? Not listing your house, but building a game plan. But the most important phrasing is this, and I don't see agents use this, which is, okay, here is what happens next. Here's what happens next is the best language you can use with the client that allows the client to relax completely that says, you know exactly what's going to happen next, and they don't have to worry about the 23 things that are going to happen. And here's the most important thing you say after. I say, hey, Janice, uh, so here's what happens next. There's nothing for you to do. No agent ever tells a client that there's nothing for you to do. When you tell them that there's nothing for them to do, it dramatically reduces the stress. What every other agent tells them is, oh, between now and then, I want you to think about this. Between now and then, I want you to read my drop-off packet. Between now and then, I want you to do research. Nothing. Hey, there's nothing for you to do. And then you say, I'm going to start preparing for our meeting with our team. They're like, wow, he has a team. Whether I have it or not, it doesn't matter. I'm praying with our team. That will automatically send you a calendar invitation that you just have to click and accept. What am I doing? I'm forcing them to realize that starting this process with my team kicks off a calendar invitation, right? And then I say, like others, I won't send you crazy materials to prepare beforehand because it's our job to take care of the process for you. I want to manufacture so much safety that they get off the phone and say, man, that Sharon guy, he made it so easy. That's what I want them to feel because how you set this up determines everything else. And, the, and, and I like to finish up by saying, hey, by the way, I'll confirm all of this via a quick text if that's okay with you. When you do something like this, now it's, these are just the pieces of the puzzle. When you do something like this, it gives you permission to then send them email or text-based reminders because you already told them there is automatically going to send this. Now it's super powerful because you can have, you can go into your Calendly or whatever, and you can put the appointment in the Calendly and, and immediately an invitation goes out. And then 24 hours prior, they get an automatic reminder. Four hours prior, they get an automatic reminder. And you know what they think? Oh my gosh, Sharon told me this was going to happen. Sharon is congruent with what he said was going to happen. Now I built so much trust into the process by doing nothing. And that's the cool part about all of this. Most agents, a lot of agents struggle. They're like, oh, I don't want the client to feel like this is automated. Well, you don't want the client to feel like this is automated because you didn't tell them that it was going to be automated. If you told them it was going to be automated, it would be just fine. But we never tell them that it was going to be automated. And then we're like, oh, it feels, it doesn't feel like a warm process. They don't care that it's a warm process. They just care that you're on the ball. That's all they care about. So you have to set the expectation. Here's number two. Um, Tristan and I have talked about this a lot. We talk about this thing called authentic automation. The world has changed. There's no such thing. It's freaking automation. It's not authentic. It is only authentic if you tell them it's coming. It is not authentic if you don't tell them it's coming. The authenticity of the automation is preparing them for the automation. The authenticity of the automation is saying that the automation is going to happen. Then they know it's automatic. That's why I always like to tell people, there's just crap and good. Most of us send crap. If you send crap, they won't respond. If you send good stuff, they will respond. That is all the difference is. So stop sending crap. That's all this is, right? So that's number one. Here's number two. I want to, um, over the last five years, I have generated what I like to call the perfect agenda email. Um, I think it is one of the, someone talked about Robert Cialdini in the chat. The perfect agenda email. If you run this perfect agenda email, I like to send it the morning of the appointment. Um, my suggestion would be to start with this as a template. I'm going to give it to you. Uh, it should already be in your slides, by the way. So let me, if you have not, if you didn't get the slides, I'll put it back in the chat. Uh, I'll give it to you. And let me take you to the perfect agenda email. I generally send this in the morning of, and let me actually kind of read this to you. So subject line, it says meeting game plan. I don't say listing appointment. The client doesn't wake up in the morning and say, oh, I have a listing appointment with Sharon. The client has no idea. Stop giving them jargon. Hey, I'm giving you a meeting game plan. 
super cool and relaxed. So my wife's name is Niti. And I say, hey, I'm looking forward to seeing you today and putting together a strategy for the sale of your home. Right? So I want to first get the strategy and the process right. Cool. Then I say, hey, as part of our client process, we have found that it's helpful to cover three important topics in the meeting to set us up for success. Your goals, our process, and a game plan. What I'm trying to tell them is, yes, there's your goals, but it's your goals, but it's my process. It's not your goals and whatever you want. It is your goals and it's my process. If you don't take control, they're just going to walk all over you. How I set the stage is how everything happens. And the third is, they're going to have a game plan. Hey, this timeline, pricing, and the process. And here's the most important part. And of course, we can discuss anything else that you would like. I just wanted to offer a structure for our time together. And then I say, hey, we just want to give you a good sense of the landscape, how our process fits in, and build it around your goals. The most important part of this email, one more time, is this. No prep required. Again, I'm reducing stress. No prep required. I can guide you through it all. No prep required. Our job is before we get there to tell them no prep required because everyone else is giving them work to do. If you send this, I, I have found, by the way, you can tweak this email. You can send it out. I found that it's really helpful to send this the morning of the appointment because it frames them the right way. The night before it causes stress, the morning of, they scan it and they're like, oh my gosh, Sean is on it. And that's really good. You can tweak it if you'd like, but my suggestion is just use it because I'm giving it to you for you to use, uh, but tweak it as you'd like. So this is number two, the perfect agenda email. Let me give you number three. Um, if you did nothing else, if you did nothing else today, I would suggest doing this. I call this the database activator. I actually came up with this with my good friend, Jimmy Mackin, who's the CEO of Curator. Tristan, you know Jimmy really well. And uh, Jimmy's awesome. So the idea was I had to come up with an email where most of the time when we get an appointment, what we do is we want to sell the house. We want to sell the listing. We want to sell the buyer. We want to sell the opportunity. What I want to sell is I want to sell the appointment. Think about this first. Kid. I want to sell the appointment. So let me read you through this. This is the number one email that will get you more, more responses than anything else. So the, the, the email goes like this. It says, uh, sorry, this is from my friend in Scottsdale. It says, Scottsdale Early Access. Hey, I'm meeting with a client tomorrow, but putting up their home for sale in a few weeks. It's four bedroom, four bath, 4,100 square feet. It's got a pool and spa, 10, 10 out of 10 schools. It's roughly 1.2 to 1.5. All I'm saying is, can you shoot me a quick reply if you're interested and I'll get you all the details. What I'm doing is I'm selling the appointment. Now, here's what happens. You'll send this to your database of a couple hundred people. You'll get four or five people that say yes. Now, when you walk into the listing appointment, you say, hey, Mr. and Mrs. Client, a lot of our, a lot of the agents, the average agent in the marketplace will tell you, will promise you, will tell you things that they're going to do after you give them the listing. That is the promise. What I wanted to show you was I already sent this to my database and we have six people interested and I didn't even haven't seen the home yet. What it does is it makes them believe that you can do so much more. Every single listing appointment that you get, now you get to sell the appointment. Now, I'm going to have a lot of people that say, well, Sharon, you know, I can't do that in our MLS. We have like the coming soon rules. By the way, I ran this by real estate council. That is not true. You're not putting out the address. You're just saying, I'm meeting with a client. You're not saying you have a deal. You're not saying it's exclusive on the MLS. You're not saying anything. You're just saying, I'm meeting with a client. This may come to market pretty soon. If you're interested, let me know. And now that allows you to now do two ways of saying, hey, it's not just a just listed. It's a, hey, I, I'm going on this appointment. Do you want in? Hey, I went on this appointment. I got it. Hey, this is coming to market. Hey, this is coming. You can do so much more with this process. If we start to sell the appointment, it gets really powerful because now your clients get to see that you started selling the appointment before they even hired you, which means in their minds, they've already started to hire you, which is really powerful. So this is number three, which is the database activator email. Uh, Tristan, I've showed you this one. This is called the magic whiteboard. I've probably done this, I don't know, 10 plus years. Oh, people overthink this completely. And I will tell you this one thing, if you did, will make your clients fall in love with you forever. So this is a live thing that I'm going to show you right now. So this is a on, on a whiteboard in my office. Uh, look at the date on this. This is July 18th. This is during my TELUS days. This is July 18th, and I went on this appointment, six gallery place, Newport, Newport Coast. We got this listing. We sold it for like 12 and a half million. And the crazy part about this is I had already had this pre-written. I literally went in, erased what was there on the whiteboard, rewrote six gallery place with a different colored marker. I didn't even make this up. 
and I took a screenshot, I took a picture and I sent it to the clients. Now, a lot of people will ask me, hey, Sharon, what's behind your head? And I'm like, bro, it doesn't matter. None of this matters. All that it matters is what's on here that shows that you've already started working for them. That's what matters. Now, I've taught this to a lot of people over the years, and I want to show you a couple of really janky ways in which this, this gets done. And I will tell you, the jankier it is, the more you win. And here's what I mean by that. So this is a, a text message. Literally, I sent it out saying, hey, our team is working on the launch strategy for your home. Please look over some examples here. I send it right in text. So the client gets it and they're like, wait a minute, Tron's already like working on this for me. The jankier it looks, the better. But uh, so here's my friend, Kat. Kat, I actually taught this at a seminar. She took my whiteboard paper. She ripped it. She flipped the side. She put it on her hotel mirror. She drew this out and she sent this to her client. More casual, <laughs> more impact. It jankier it is, the better. It's sure. amazing. But I will tell you even what's jankier than this. This is my friend, Alex Yu. Alex drew this out on a regular sheet of paper. He placed the sheeter on the floor. He took the picture with his iPhone and he sent it to the client. Here's the thing with the client. He's like, hey, good morning, May. I wanted to let you know that we had a meeting on this morning on blah, 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 Lane. We created a game plan. You know what she says? Oh my gosh, that sounds great. Thank you so much. Your client never said that sounds great. Thank you so much to anything ever. But now you get to do this before you arrive. Small things like this, they're like, wow, Tristan's already working for me. Sharon's already working for me. This is so easy to do, but I will tell you, jankier, the better on all of this. All right? Do more. Um, if, you, uh, if you work in a lender-driven marketplace, can you just give me a one in the chat? Just give me a one in the chat if you work in a lender-driven marketplace. So if you actually, if meaning all your homes actually have finance-based sales. It's not all cash. You actually have finance-based sales in your home. So like a lot of us, right? A lot of us you, you use financing to sell the home. You, most homes have a mortgage associated with it. So I will tell you, most people don't really understand how to utilize a lender in this market. So I will tell you how to actually do this, which gets really, really well. All right, we got a couple of lenders here. So here's what this looks like. You want, you want an email from your lender. Hey, by the way, lenders on this call, you want an email from your lender to you, which I think will be really powerful. So the, the email is to James Bond, the agent, and it says buyers for Ritz Cove, right? It says, Hey, James, as promised, I researched our active pre-approved buyers who are immediately qualified to buy a home in Ritz Cove. We have 37 pre-approved buyers. 21 of them need to buy in the next 100 days, and they're pre-approved for somewhere between 1.5 and 1.8 million. Please send me the details so that I can get to our, of this home, so I can get to our 37 pre-approved buyers when your clients are ready. Here's the most powerful part of this. I would print off this email and take it to the appointment. Because now you tell the client, hey, Mr. And Mrs. Client, um, 30, you know, 70% of the people that are actually going to want to buy this home are going to go through financing. We already, I've already talked to our mortgage bankers and they have 37 pre-approved buyers in this marketplace. Let me show you the email that he sent me. And you just show them the email. You know why? That is called proof over promise. Instead, what we do is we promise them that when we get the listing, hey, Mr. And Mrs. Client, when you list with me, I will do X, Y, Z. That is just promising. Everybody walks in there and just promises people. You want to give them the proof over the promise. So when you show that, it blows their mind that the client, and you're not even mentioning the client's name, always proof over promise. Now I'll make, if you want to take this to a completely different level, I will show you this. You want the lender to leave you a voicemail. And here's how this works. This voicemail looks like this. So I, let's say I was calling Tristan. I'd say, hey, Tristan, this is Sharon from Real Mortgage as promised. I researched all the certified pre-approved buyers who would be interested in, you know, in 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 Calabasas. We currently have 37 pre-approved buyers in the 1.5 to 1.7 range, and 21 of them need to buy in the next 90 to 100 days. As soon as your clients are ready for pre-marketing, I can get this information out to our pre-approved clients immediately. In the meantime, I will continue to build this pre-approved short buyer buyer shortlist so that we can hit the ground running when you're ready. Thank you. Please give me a call at X. Now, here's what Tristan does. Tristan has his voicemail. Tristan says to Tristan goes to talk to Ethan and he's like, Ethan, you know, we actually work with um, a couple of great mortgage brokers who scour active buyers for us. In fact, one of our mortgage brokers, Sharon, actually sent me a voicemail when I told him about the home. You take your phone, you put it on the table, you hit play Kardashian style. You play the voicemail live. You know why? That is the proof over the promise because they don't believe you otherwise because everyone else has told them what? Oh, when you list with us, I will do X, I will do Y, I will do Z. But when you do this, now 
your lender is tied into you. Your client believes that you can do more than what everyone else does. And this is all like in the first five minutes, this is all before you arrive. No one does this much amount of work. You know what they do? They drop up a big fat free listing package and they expect the client to read it. I will tell you right now. All right. I've done 4,000 flips in my life. 4,000. 4,000. Right. 4,000 flips. Anytime someone has actually sent me a pre-approval pre packet or a pre-listing packet, it goes in the trash. Let me tell you why, right? There's two types of people that read pre-listing packets. Listing packet number one, they just lead it. They, they look at it and they're like, oh my God, this is too much. I'm not going to do it. And the second group, they read it. And on page 39, they find your typos and now they don't like you. <laughs> There's no in between. Like you are, you are guaranteed to be screwed. And the reason you want to do the pre-approval packet, you're now making them work to work with you. Instead, just tell them there's nothing for you to do. And you guarantee and manage this process overall. So I got la last two things in the last two minutes, right? So um, I am a big fan of warming up the neighbors when I do this. So uh, I have a quick script for you. So if you arrive 10 to 20 minutes before the appointment, you kind of should walk the neighborhood. I think it's a really good idea. And my favorite thing is I would knock on the door. So let's say I let's say Tristan is my next door neighbor. I would knock on the door. And my first thing is, hey, I'm so sorry to bother you. I'm not here to sell you anything. Hey, my name is Sharon Trivats. I'm with Real right here in Laguna Beach. We specialize in selling real estate in this pocket of Orange County. And you want this word. The reason I'm here is because we were meeting with a couple of homeowners in this neighborhood about listing their home. As we build out our marketing campaigns, I just wanted to ask you one question. What is your favorite part about living here? Now, I just, what have I told them? Hey, number one, I don't want to sell you anything. Number two, we sell real estate right here. Number three, the reason I'm doing this is because I'm talking to four people. Number four, I want to build out some marketing, so I'm curious what you think. They're like, oh, we like this, we like that. Awesome. And you're like, hey, thank you so much for the information. And then you turn around and walk away, and you're like, hey, by the way, when the listing goes live, would you like to know about it? Awesome. Hey, what's your best text message or phone number? And that's how you get the phone number because they permission-based marketing because they just gave you information this overall, right? So it's super helpful because I love this neighborhood door knock. All right, last one, uh, especially for my uh, follow-up boss friends. This is the proof is in the database. If you can't utilize your database to showcase value in the appointment, you have dramatically lost. Here's what most people will say. Oh, you know, we have uh, 722 buyers in our database. You know what, they're, what they do? They do not believe you. They don't believe you. But instead... Instead, if you did something like this, it gets very fun. So you take, go to your follow boss account. You have your full contacts. You say, hey, Mr. and Mrs. Client, we have uh, 57,000 people in our buyer database right now. We've built this over the last three years. We have 18,000 that are actively looking over the last 90 days. We have 7,000 that are looking for a four bedroom, three bath. And the, the 2,000 people wanted to buy in the next 90 days. We've, we have spoken to 211 in the last 15 days. Now, if I say I have 211 buyers, they believe me. That's what's important. If you don't show them, if you don't show proof, they don't believe you. If I just said, oh, I have 57,000 people in my database, you think they believe you? No, they don't. Mm -hmm. You want to show proof. But when you show this breakdown, they're like, oh, he's not claiming he has 57,000 buyers. He's claiming he has 211. But if I just said, hey, Tristan, I have 211 buyers, he's like, come on, how the heck do you have 211 buyers? So True. now you get a chance to really understand how to use this before you get there. And all you need is just a little sheet that shows how many contacts you have in your follow boss account. That's it. Because that shows proof, right? Everything that we do is proof over promise. If you take anything away from today, it is this proof over promise. We need to stop promising. Our entire industry is based on promise, promise, promise. Proof over promise is everything. Right. Anytime you have an opportunity or the, our job is to do this one thing, which is to say, hmm, I'm going to make a claim on how my listings get uh, syndicated. Cool. Hey, Mr. And Mrs. Client, your listings are going to go get to 142 different websites. They don't believe you. What's the proof? Hey, Mr. And Mrs. Client, we have 211 active buyers. They don't believe you. What's the proof? Hey, Mr. And Mrs. Client, when you list with us, we do X, Y, Z. They don't believe you. What's the proof? And all of this, if you preload before you get to the appointment, you win before you arrive. And that's how you get 100% listing advantage. So um, I tried to stay within my time today. So I appreciate you guys having me. And uh, hopefully this was, this was helpful.